This is a quick tutorial for using the rebooted Popcorn Maker application provided by the Internet Archive. The first thing you're going to want to do is create an account at the Internet Archive. I've provided a direct link for creating that account in your assignment sheet. So go ahead and follow that link, enter your email address, choose a screen name, and then make sure that you remember the password that you use to create your account. I've already got an account, so I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And once I'm signed in, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that's in my account. This is where you'll go in case you want to create a project and then come back and edit it later. So we'll come back to this in a second. Once you've created your account on archive.org, then you can follow the direct link to Popcorn Maker, and it will pop up with this blank application that you'll use for editing and creating annotations for your project. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've chosen the clip from Vertigo that you want to work on. Copy the URL for that clip from the assignment sheet. I've already got mine copied, so I'm ready to paste. And you'll come over here on the right where it says create new media clip. Go ahead and paste that YouTube link in and hit and Popcorn Maker will load that YouTube clip into the My Media area. Then all you need to do is grab the icon here, the thumbnail, and drag it to the middle and that's going to load up the actual video into Popcorn Maker. You might see a little button that says double click to close ads. Let's double click that so we don't have any annoying ads popping up. And then you'll see at the bottom we've actually got a timeline where the video clip is loaded. We have a little playhead up here and if we drag along the timeline we can jump to different parts of the video. Okay, so we've got our video loaded and now what we want to do is start creating text. Start creating little comments for different parts of what's happening in the clip. So I'm just going to drag my playhead to about where I want to say something. Let's say I want to say something right here. Double click that again. Then I'm going to come over under events, which should open automatically. You can always click back and forth between these different tabs. Click text and it opens up this little window for editing text. And you can see that it's starting at a certain point and ending at another point. We can make adjustments to that. The main thing to know right now is that, as you can see, we've got a little sort of text um, window that's opened up here. It automatically says Popcorn Maker, but it's black and it's really hard to read against the background of this video. So before you start doing anything, before you edit any text, go to the Advanced tab under Text and change the font color. You can change the font color just by clicking on the color uh, sort of uh, area right here and then dragging around inside this little color box. So white is going to be a lot easier to read. You can see that it's changing up here in the video. And you can change the font size if you want. If you need to make things smaller, you can change that if you have a lot to say. Um, and you're going to fill up the box quite a bit. If you want to get really crazy, you can add bold and italics. So, so you can change the kind of font that you use um, to something a little bit more showy. That's going to be really annoying, so let's not use that. Um, and so once you've kind of set all of your different parameters here, then you can go back to basic, and this is probably the easiest way to change your text, is just to type in the text area. So you can type something like, here is my comment. Obviously you'll be typing something much more interesting and thoughtful than that, but you'll see that it gets reflected in the window up here. And then when you click away from that comment, you click somewhere else in the video, um, you'll see that you get these little arrows, and then you can drag your comment wherever you want it to be placed here in the screen so that your comment can be actually really pointing to something that's happening on screen. So you'll see now we've created a new layer down in our timeline. It has the little letters here that indicate that this is um, a piece of text. And so what happens is if I kind of back up um, earlier in the video and then play it by hitting the little play button here, the video goes along and then at that little spot your comment pops up. And then it goes away. And so you can keep adding comments by doing the same thing, go back to events, click text, it'll appear wherever you want in your timeline, just redo that whole process. And then down here in the timeline, if it doesn't appear quite at the right time, you can move it around so it'll pop up later in the video. Maybe you want it to pop up way later in the video down here. 
And again, you'll see it's popping up black because we haven't changed any of the parameters. And then let's say it's not on screen long enough. It's hard to read because it goes away too quickly. You can grab either side of the handles and make it longer. So it will appear on screen for a longer period of time. So if you've written a lot up here and it takes a while, then you might want to give us a little bit more time to read it. Okay, so you'll just keep adding little bits of text like that throughout the whole video. Make sure that you're commenting on lots of different um, portions of the video. You can keep you know, scrolling back and forth um, to add comments. And then finally, when you're done with all the work that you've done and you want to save it, then you'll want to come up here again to the menu area, click Project, make sure that you give it a title, and I'm just going to call this Vertigo, um, I'll call it Vertigo 1.0, because this is the first version. I've just sort of done a few things, but I want, might want to come in and add to it later. You can add a description if you want. This is a project about Vertigo, and then click Save. And so what's going to happen, and this might take a few seconds, is uh, it's going to go ahead and save the project, and then it will bring you this URL. You want to, when you're ready to turn in your project, you want to copy this URL, and then you'll be pasting that into the assignments area on Canvas. So don't grab the URL up here from the uh, browser. That won't work. You want to make sure that you grab this uh, URL to turn in. And so if I click on this URL, it's going to take me to something that looks like this. I'm going to see as the instructor, I'll be able to play this well, back. It should be back from your face and, pen back. and then I'll see That's all your comments it. pop up when I play it back. I tried it. There it is. Here's it my comment. Okay, so this is what you're going to be turning in. Now, let's say you create this project, um, you've saved it, but you're not ready to turn it in yet. You realize there's a few things you want to go back and change. You're going to go back to archive.org where you created an account. Again, make sure that you log in. And once you're logged in, if you go under your username, mine is jprov, click on My Library, and this might pop up for you automatically, it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. So I've been using uh, the Internet Archive for a long time, so I have a ton of stuff in here. But what you should see is the project that you've just created. If you hover over it, it says Popcorn Project. It should have the title that you gave it. And that's why it's important that you give it a title, because when we go to edit it, we're actually going to be creating a bunch of new versions of this. And you want to be able to keep track of which version is the latest version. So if I click on this now, it takes me to the playback, right? This is, again, um, it takes me to the... Um, URL that you were given when you saved the project. So you can't edit it from here. Don't use this edit button down here. That's going to take you to a completely different window. Instead, if you want to edit your actual popcorn project, you need to come down here to the bottom of the playback screen where you see a little recycle icon. If you hover over it, it says remix. Click on that, and then that's going to open up the popcorn maker editor and all of the things that you've just created. So again, if we come over to um, our timeline, you'll see the comments that you've already created. You can again go back to events and keep adding text. But what's going to happen here now is when you're ready to save this version, you go back to project, you're going to give it a new title. So this might be Vertico 2.0 because you've just made some edits and you're creating a new version of it. Click Save, give you a new URL to turn in. So essentially when you edit you're going to be creating kind of a whole new project so you want to make sure that you're turning in the most recent version of the project that reflects all of the work that you've done. And again if you go back to um, our account page which is uh, back over here it might take a second but when you go back to my library in your Internet Archive account it might take a second for it to show up. It hasn't quite shown the um, saved project here, but you'll start seeing, yeah, it's not quite there yet, but it will show up. You'll start seeing a whole bunch of different versions of your Vertigo project. So you'll be able to keep track of your most recent one and then the ones that you created before that. But you're obviously gonna wanna turn in the most recent version, again, using that process where when you hit save, it brings up a URL and that's the URL that you turn in, okay? So that's how you use the newest version of Popcorn Maker. Um, thanks for watching.